originally I was going to build all of the arrangement kind of like off camera. And what I wanted to do was make a breakdown, an eight bar breakdown going between bars 17 and 25. So we're going to kind of break it down and then build back up the energy. And then after that, we'll bring the synths in. And uh, at first I figured I might as well just do that on my own since it might be somewhat time consuming and boring to watch. And then I realized that for a lot of people, it's these parts, it's doing this in the arrangement that trips them up the most. So maybe me going through this with you will be helpful. We'll use a couple of new devices to keep this interesting. And I'll talk through what I'm kind of doing. Also, just the more you see somebody working inside of this sort of timeline view, I think the better because it can be confusing and there's all sorts of things going on at the same time. So I've already added in a note track of just a kick drum hitting. And the reason I didn't continue on with the muting automation is because if you look at the way our signal flow is working, we're going into the delay and then we're going into the mixer. So if I was to mute it, it would just shut off the delay as well, which isn't what I want. I actually like the fact that it trickles over into the breakdown. That's kind of a part of this. And the same is gonna be true about the uh, Machinista that we have as well. So we'll just go through, kind of do a little bit of a breakdown here and I'll try to talk through some of my logic in case you're confused. Nothing replaces experience with this. The more tracks you make, the easier this becomes and nothing replaces doing a lot of active listening so listening to songs that you like and maybe even songs you don't like trying to break them apart and hear how they transition from section to section this is a small little jingle here so by no means is this like a professional way of doing this but it will get the job done regardless so when i listened back and i heard it kind of go through this main part really kind of like the way that the delay trickled over, but I'd probably even like it to go on for a little bit longer. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find where that is. Here's the delay and I'm going to automate actually the feedback and the level. And so right when we get to the end of that little phrase, I'm going to increase both of those. So let's just go ahead and kind of do this at the same time. I'll give myself a little bit of a cushion. And then I want to make sure actually at the end that it returns to its normal place. So I'm just going to double click here to make sure that it comes back. And then I'm just going to fade this up. That might be too extreme. We'll be able to hear it in context in a second. And I'll do the same thing down here as well. So let's take a quick listen to this. This one's the level, so I'll probably keep that raised actually. Okay, good. That's kind of what I wanted. I'd spend a lot more time tweaking this, but basically I just want that delay tail to run out a bit longer and we will return to the original position before this comes back in at bar 25 if we actually go and kind of get a better view of the arrangement here. Uh, try to keep everything color coded when you can. It can be kind of tricky. I want all of these things to be the same color actually. So I chose strawberry. Good, so I know these are all relevant to the Machinista. This is the beatbox, so I'm gonna change that color to something else so I just don't get confused as I'm going through. Um, and you can hear that I've actually already programmed in an individual uh, little drum pattern here as well. And I've automated the uh, tube and I've also automated the gain. So the distortion level, the drive level, and then the gain, just to kind of make things more interesting. And you'll notice that just because we have a loop that's being repeated, with the note track here, it doesn't mean that I have to um, 
restrain everything else to the same length. And that's kind of where this gets confusing. So like my drive is kind of doing its own thing. The gain is doing its own thing, but the pattern is repeating. And I hope that makes enough sense to you. So the other thing that I'd like to do here is really just make this part more interesting, the solo singer part. That's what's actually gonna drive a lot of the excitement here. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mostly use a filter and then I'm gonna use a pretty cool little effect that they have in here also. So um, I'm gonna do a couple of things with this. Let me just listen back one more time to figure everything out. And one thing I actually could probably do as well is play with the pan a little bit so that people are really kind of hearing this. Remember, we're running into four. So if I adjust the pan at this point, it's having an impact going into the delay, but it's not having an impact out of the delay. So I'm going to grab the pan from here, create an automation track for that. And this might actually go somewhere else. It goes where the mini mixer is located. So you have to be aware of that. It can be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this color to strawberry again. And uh, let's see, how do I want to go about doing this? We'll just kind of swing it around at random probably is fine. So it will come in, we'll go up a little bit and then we'll just kind of come back. Okay, cool. Like I said before, I might go in and do some more tweaks off camera to make that last even a little bit longer. But for now, I think we are okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just work a little bit with this sound here, with the chorus sound. I'm going to make this more interesting. And to do that, I'm going to use a filter. This is the old classic. Let's do some filter sweep techniques. I'm going to take it a bit farther, but here we'll go in here. And actually, we could bring this closer. Maybe one thing that would be fun is to actually automate the crossfader a little bit. And that's going to pull up here so that uh, when we get to this transition section, we can actually swing it back a little bit more towards the chorus, which might be kind of cool. So I'm just going to, again, set this up so that by the time we get back around, it's where I want it to be. And I'm just going to swing this down a little bit. And let's check that out. prominent thing yeah that actually has a, a more profound impact than you'd really think just upon listening to that quickly so now let's go in and let's start messing around a little bit I'm just gonna disconnect that I'm going to add a slope in here and then I'm also going to be adding in one of these guys <laughs> a crazy effect it's a lot of fun to mess with um, but for now, maybe we'll just go ahead and get the filter right, and then we'll mess around with the other one. Uh, this would also be a good time to, well, mm, maybe not so much a good time to go into something different, but uh, we'll think about it later. So I'm going to use actually the low pass. That's fine. I'm going to start by just having it fully open and mixes at 100%. So I'm going to automate this. I'm going to automate this. And where's it gonna put that? Probably put it at the bottom. So I'm just gonna drag that up so I know that it's working on the um, audio track I have, the solo singer. I'm gonna call this filter sweep. Okay. So I will create both. little bit too heavy cool so I'm pretty happy with that the only other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this into what they call the I think they called like the Russell Bach or something like that really it just gives you all of these really cool effects to run in time so I'm gonna go out of the slope I'm gonna go into the input here and then I'm going to run the main output ah, back into our crossfader if I can get it. Where are you? I think this is the main out. Cool. So 
One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, on my add track, I'm going to go down to the Rasselbach and let's see. Where's our main output? I guess I must have used output five probably. What I could do is I could just add in a pattern track. That way it will only play during this time. That's one way of doing it. So we'll use pattern A1 and we'll just create something over this range. And we might only really need it to play in the second half. So we'll figure that out as well. So it might only need to come in like at bar 21. Which is there. Uh, and let's just go ahead and make something. We could load up a preset or we can just kind of mess around with this. Let's see what we want. We can just try. Make it go fast. Eh. That's kind of cool. No. Yeah, so just something like that. And you can see we have these different effects and we can put them in with time and then we have different options we can choose. So maybe I'll pitch that up. That's a little crazy though. Then I could actually make this up to like 32 and I could go into the second half and I could mess around with things. But I do believe that this is going to, yeah, stay the same all the way. So actually, I'm fine with just having it repeat at 16. Maybe I prefer going down, though. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. And then the final thing I would maybe do is actually just, like, increase the gain on this as opposed to using the crossfader. But I guess I could go to the crossfader and make it work better. But I think I'm going to use the gain. Uh, not low gain. I just want gain in general. And let's see, where did that get put? It's probably it should be in where the mini mixer is. Let's close everything down just to see if we can find it. Okay, here it is, crossfader input. So I'm just going to increase this a little bit over the breakdown section. too far. <laughs> 